Hello there and welcome to Love Audio. Now, if you're new here, you don't know who I am. My name is Paul Weber. Uh, very pleased to be here. If you are new, of course, please do say hi in the comments and I'll introduce you to the regulars. And regulars, please make sure the newcomers make them very, very welcome indeed, okay? Now, I aim to offer beginners in audio production a friendly, safe and fun platform on which to learn the basics together. Now, if you're on board with that, let's get on with it, shall we? A great idea. Okay, so tonight's live stream is all about compression, okay? Um, when to compress, when not to compress. That was the title that I threw up earlier on, of course, which is this one. Uh, so, when, you know, when is it necessary to compress something or when is it not necessary to compress it? You know, when do you kind of leave it alone and, and where do you draw the line? We'll be looking at some audio and looking at how compression affects those kind of things through this evening's stream. So I do hope you can stick around. If you have any questions, of course, drop them in the comments and I'll come back to you throughout this evening's stream. All right, so let's say hi to a couple of people first of all who have just arrived. Hello to Sammy, first off the mark with Studio Geek 32. Hello to you from New Jersey. I've got a bit of a treat tonight for you, actually, Sammy. Stick around if you can till the end, or towards the end anyway, because we have a new feature, a new little segment um, that I'm going to be running, and New Jersey features in that particular segment. All right, I'm not going to say any more than that, and I'll reveal, <laughs> reveal all a little bit later on, okay? Uh, hi to Dan as well. Dan's in Swindon in Wiltshire in the UK. Um, also a production engineer and doing rather well with his new company as well. So Dan, thank you very much indeed. Throw up the link to your um, uh, to your website if you would like to in the chat. I'm perfectly happy for you to do that um, because then people can reach out to you if they'd like some other production done as well. I don't mind that. Yeah, you know, we're not too precious here, to be fair, and we're all friends at the end of the day. So, um, yeah, no problem at all. Just drop the link into the um, the chat there, Dan, and um, let people click away. Uh, but not click away, not yet. Don't go yet. <laughs> That's the main idea. Stick with it, all right? Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about compression tonight. And um, what I wanted to do was to kind of throw up some ideas for you on screen. Um, I've done a... Let me just have a look here if I can just narrow that window there. And then if I do the desktop thing, you'll see... Um, what's going on in the window there. Now, I was told by a couple of professional streamers that I wasn't stood in the middle. I kept moving around, so I need to keep myself still. And I've actually written on the floor, <laughs> stand here, left and right. And I've got like a left and right where my feet go. So I need to stand here central, so I'm right in the middle of that kind of circular thing uh, to the left of the the window that's showing the graphics, all right? So uh, if you don't, if you see me like stiffs aboard, you know that I'm trying not to move too far away from left or right, uh, which is pretty cool. All right, so we're going to go across to the, um, the audio production suite right now. And what I'm going to do is, because I've already kind of set this up, I'm going to turn off the inserts for each of these channels, okay? So I'm just going to turn them off right now. And we'll listen to them in isolation and... Um, and then, of course, you can make your own mind up as to whether you think we should compress them or not compress them. That is today's question, all right? Um, also, we'll be taking a look at the settings on the desk here as well, because I've got a compressor, com compressor even, currently running across this microphone. Um, so hopefully, you know, you can hear the fact that it's nice and clear and it's punch punchy and it's nice and loud. And that's because the compressor is working a little harder than it normally would to get that... Um, kind of even wave file if you like if we had if we had to record this then you'd see like a consistent wave file which is pretty cool all right so i've disabled the inserts on these channels here and then what i'm going to do is uh, bring that down again so you can see the waves in action and let's move that away and we'll zoom out a bit further what we've got here is um a bit of a jingle project and i'll, I'll tell you why that's going on in a minute uh, but let me first play you the backing track. This is the backing track first of all, okay? There we go. So that's pretty basic uh, backing track there. And you'll notice that there's a kind of a gap in the middle. So I'm going to use that as a donut. And what I've done here is if I just get rid of the mixer for a second, you'll see that. So on the vocals channel, let's solo that and then bring that one in only. This should be it's the jingle of the week. So that's a little clue 
as to the segment that's appearing a little later on in the show. All right. Um, so look out for that. It's the it's the jingle of the week. All right. Um, and then what I've also done on the back end of this particular segment where the jingle comes in. I've put this in for you. Love audio. So just the male vocals on the love audio bit. Right. And um, I had to put that in Melodyne in order to change the pitch, the note, okay? If you want to take a look at that, we'll do that very briefly. So we'll go right click and edit with Melodyne. Melodyne is a piece of software that you can use to manipulate audio, uh, particularly singing or instrumentation and everything else like that. You can, you can change the pitch and stuff like that. So if we have a listen to this in isolation, uh, you can see that going on. Love audio. Let me put my headphones on so I can hear what you've, you guys can hear as well. Love audio. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? I mean, that's obviously manipulating it so that it kind of changes what it was before because it didn't match the backing track. If I bring that in, you'll hear that hopefully those two should match up now. Love audio. And they're in the same key. So that's why I wanted to kind of manipulate that in in Melodyne so I can get that audio to match up with the, the backing track, which is above it, all right? Um, so there's three elements so far. None of them have got compression on yet because we've turned it all off, remember? Um, so we'll go back to the main window again. This is the mix down of those three elements, um, which I've already saved and it's, it's in the system and you'll hear the whole thing <laughs> as we go forward. But um, going back to the, the mix itself then in that case, so we'll look at the mixer and we'll open that up so you can see the different inserts and things. First of all, on the uh, track itself, on the music track, I've got a compressor here. Now, what I've also done, if I open that to edit it, and uh, so we'll look here, edit. So we'll bring the, the compressor up. This is a compressor. So first of all, what we're looking at is the threshold. So um, let's just bring that up for you, two seconds. So. So this is the threshold, first of all, okay? So what we're looking at is the threshold, and we've got it at negative 10 dB. Now, if you change that, it's kind of, it's, you can imagine what a threshold is. It's, it's kind of, you know, you carry somebody over the threshold. So it's like a barrier, okay? And the higher or lower you have that depends on how much audio it's going to let through, all right? Let me just bring that up so you can hear me better. That's better, but a bit central. Um, so that's the, the threshold there. Uh, which we just shown you. Now, I'm not going to touch that because, um, well, I can do, but I will put it back to negative 10 again. So you see how that's moving that, that, that slider around? Okay, that's the threshold there. All right, so we'll leave it at around about negative 10 as we had it before. Uh, it's quite, in, quite finite, so we'll get as close as we can to it anyway. I nearly had it then, didn't I? There we go. Well, negative 10.24 dB is not going to make a great deal of difference, which is fine. The next thing on my list there with regards to um, to looking at what a compressor does and, you know, the idea of a compressor is uh, what it's doing is um, is allowing audio to be expanded in the quiet bits and squished, if you will, for the louder bits so that you get a, a kind of uniform wave file appearing uh, when you look at it on a graph. OK. So the next thing we're going to look at here is, I don't have my compressor on. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so you're now hearing me without compression. That's that's quite interesting because we'll put that back on in a minute and you'll hear the difference. Um, so the next thing in, in my list is attack. So we'll look at the attack here. Now the attack really is how quickly you want that to, to trigger. So how quickly do you want the compressor to start working after it's let the audio through? So after it's gone through the threshold and uh, you, you want to know you know, how quickly it comes in with the attack. That's the attack there. So we're looking at currently 8.39 milliseconds for it to come in, okay? So that's the attack on the compressor. The next one there is release. And that's kind of how, how long after it's let through everything do you want it to kind of tail away and, and not do any more work, all right? So, what you know, you're releasing... Uh, the compressor from doing its work. That's that's basically it in a nutshell. And we've got 79 milliseconds. So believe it or not, 79 milliseconds, you know, so 0.7 of a second, I guess. Seven, 79 milliseconds, is that right? Yeah, it must be right, isn't it? Because um, 1,000 milliseconds is a second, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> My maths is terrible. Um, 
God knows why I got a job with uh, you know audio production. But anyway, so the release is how quickly it lets go of of what that uh, what that does. And then the final thing I want to talk about, and because the compressor is going to compress the volume of most things, let me go back to uh, uh, to my main camera there a second. Uh, so the compressor is is basically doing this. So it's bringing down the volume overall of whatever you're putting through the compressor. Okay. So what you're going to need to do is to raise that gain ever so slightly to give you a better mix. Okay. So the next thing we're going to talk about is gain. Let me go back to desktop again, which is here. And then we'll look at this. So the gain here, so the gain makeup, makeup gain is very, very little. I didn't want to put too much on it because otherwise you're going to peak it at the end and we're going to have to put a limiter on the um, the final track, which actually I have done, as you can see here. So the limiter is on the final track before we send it out to uh, to be published, etc., like that. So we put a limiter on the end and then you don't get that clipping or that um, distortion that you might get if you're going to force something through that end. So the gain, really, the side chain gain, and I meant to mention this at the beginning. What we're doing is with this backing track at the top, we are side chaining it with the vocals and with the jingle. OK, so we're side chaining it with the vocals one and with the jingles. That's track two and track three in this particular section. All right. So the side chain gain, if that makes sense, the side chain gain is um, is what your uh, is the level rather is the level that is forcing the compressor to dip but it's being triggered by the voice and the jingle on the other two tracks, okay? And then the, finally, the makeup gain, because we talked about the gain, didn't we, there? So the makeup gain there is what you're going to be sending to the final mix, all right? Hi to Diana. Diana is Artfully Blind with Diana. That's her channel. Check it out if you can. Uh, good to see you, Diana. Thank you very much indeed for joining the stream this evening. We're talking about compression, when to use it and when not to use it. So we're using it currently on this particular track. And as you can see, I've put that compressor back on now. So um, you'll hear what's going on, but it won't be triggering anything because uh, we need it to side chain. All right. So let's get rid of the mixer so you can see what's going on. We'll go back to the beginning and then we'll unsolo that and then play it from the beginning. It's the jingle of the week. Now, as you can hear, there's a lot going on there and it's a bit too noisy, in, in my opinion, um, for what we need it to be doing. So the compressor isn't working yet because we haven't forced it to um, with regards to, you know, forcing that side chain compression to, to make the compression on the, the backing track at the top to dip down enough. All right. So we go back to the mixer and we turn on the inserts for the compressor there. On the vocals, it's also got open air, which is like a um, an expander, if you will, like a bit of reverb as well. So that's on there uh, currently, and you'll see that in a second or two. Okay, that's that, and we didn't actually put it on the jingle. That's interesting. Okay, well let's 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 force a compressor onto the jingle track then. In that case, which is this one here, nothing on the inserts there as you see. But we go over to the browser window, and we pick out the compressor which is here, and we literally just drag it in. And give it there like that so that it's not being side chained by anything else uh, let's have a quick listen to that in isolation give us two seconds so we'll just close that out and then close the mixer out a second as well and we'll hear that last bit in isolation Love audio. so what that's done is lifted the vocals a bit a little bit in fact if we can just try and uh, turn that off a second so the compressor there turn that off Love audio. It's very subtle, but we're putting the compressor back on now. Love audio. Just a little bit of higher compression, giving that a, a bit more volume than it, than it actually had before. So it's, it's kind of giving, making, making it kind of more punchy, if you will, if that's a good description of that particular track. All right. So those are in place now. The vocals that you can hear, I'm going to solo that and bring that in. So you'll hear this. It's the jingle of the week. So what you've got on there is a flip-flop uh, delay system going on there with a bit of reverb as well. It's the jingle of the week. All right. So what we do then is put it all together. So we've got the backing track at the top, which is this one. You just solo that so you can hear it on its own. All right. 
and then we've got the a cappella at the end. Love audio. Which has been pitched, changed, so it matches the backing track on the top. And then finally, we've got my voice coming in for this spoken word bit just here. It's the jingle of the week. So it's meant to be a bit cheesy. It's meant to be a bit good fun, you know. So um, if we listen to the whole thing now, this is this is with the compression on. So the compression on the top channel, on the backing track uh, channel there is... Working the hardest, I would say, because it's being side-chained by the other two bits of vocal, so that my vocal and the jingle. Okay, so here we go. Let's listen to the whole thing. It's the jingle of the week. Okay, now what I've noticed is that they, the vocals there on the Love Audio bit could be a little bit louder, so I'm going to just increase that a bit and listen to that again. Yeah, that's better. And then what we'll do also is go into the compressor that's being driven by that. So we're going to this one here, which is this track, and we're going to edit, right click and then edit. So here we've got the side chain gain. So have a listen to this. Put that up slightly. Again. Yeah, that's not too bad. And globally, the mix, we can bring that down. So have a listen to this. So it's not peaking, you know, when we get to the end uh, channel. Hang on. Okay. Uh, let's have a look here. So it's, what is that? That's fine. So again, we're talking about threshold and gain and all that kind of good stuff that comes with a compressor. Uh, Diana says, hello, Sammy. Studio Geek 32. Uh, good to see you along today. Thank you so much for joining the stream. Uh, if you are new, by the way, you're just watching for the first time, drop a comment uh, in the comments and say hi, and we'll say hi to you as well. Make sure that uh, you are well looked after by the regulars. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's the compressor that's on the first channel there with a the music channel. And then, of course, you've got the one for the um, vocal and for the jingle. Uh, so we'll give that a little bit of input gain. Yeah. So it's starting to distort, and I, I really don't want that. So I'm just kind of listening out for that that bit that it sounds a bit scratchy at the top end. So have a listen. Yeah. So we're going to bring that down slightly and bring those two down as well. Yeah, it's a little better. Okay. Um, Diana says, I have a different audio question. Uh, if I'm playing a pre-recorded video on my live stream, which I do for my countdown, how to improve the audio since playing a video on a live doesn't sound great. It depends how it was recorded in the first place, Diana. Um, that's what I would say. So, you know, it, it kind of depends on, on the, the quality of the, of the video in the first place. I, I'll give you an example. Give me two seconds. Let me just import one and we'll, we'll just hear it. Um, so I'm looking at video, uh, da, 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 da. let's have a look, um, let's have a look here, let's have a look, let's have a look, let's have a look, it might not even be in here, let's have a look, uh, dee, 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 dee. Now what did I, what did I call it? I can't remember what I called it. <laughs> let's have a browse and see if we can find it. Hang on. I think I know where it is. Um, documents. I use a, a, an audio, sorry, a video editing software called um, Filmora 9 uh, by Wondershare, and it's um, it's pretty it's pretty good. I mean, I, you know, I'm not a brilliant video editor by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, yeah, here we go. So this is going to be imported in, and we'll have audio on it as well. Just have a listen to this and see if it is of the same quality that I recorded it in. Um, it sounds fine in person. The videos, I mean, yeah, this this is playing a video through vmix and coming back on my live stream let me know if it's any distortion or anything like that here we go there's no audio playing is there <laughs> i wonder why that is that was the studio build by the way <clears throat> why is there no audio playing that's just not fair maybe that's my fault hang on so look here is it in my mixer time lapse a 
And there's nobody on it. Time-lapse stand-up desk build. Hmm. Maybe this, maybe this video doesn't have any audio with it. <laughs> that, could, that could be a thing, couldn't it? <laughs> yeah, probably right. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, not really. Let's close that out. Um, <clears throat> I'll try and find the one that's got the sound on it, and that will be a lot easier. We'll be able to hear the quality of that coming back through. But um, that's what I would, I would, I would look at um, how it comes in, and, and maybe it's because it's it's too loud in the mix, perhaps. So what you need to look at, I don't know which software you're using, Diana, whether it's vMix or Ecamm or StreamYard or anything like that, but they'll have an audio mixer uh, of some description. If I go to my desktop, you'll see that. Uh, no, you won't, because I haven't got it over there. So let's go this side instead. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so this is my this is my vMix setup. So um, on the right-hand side, you'll see the audio mixer. And if I expand that, you'll see, if I go right across there, uh, these are the kind of things that I've got in here. So uh, f I've got the master, I've got channel A, channel B, and I've got the recording, which I don't need because I'm not recording anything today, so I can shrink that down. Um, I've got the outro, the stinger, the subscribe button's got sound on it, the chain reaction thing's got sound on it as well. Um, let's have a look here. The timer's got sound on it because it had the countdown music. Um, and I, you know, it, it, and, it, and again, I, I play the... I played it today and it was it was too low in the mix, so I've brought that up slightly. So hopefully on the on the beginning of the the stream earlier with the countdown, you you kind of heard that uh, better than it normally is. But um, it's just worth looking at how it was recorded in the first place. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then you can adjust these things. Uh, they'll have a, a mix that look, looks very similar to this, and you can adjust the sound levels like. That's, that's bringing down my whole volume because that's the that's the volume I'm bringing in from my mixing desk. Um, I don't need that one because that's been and gone. And then this one is secret, and I'm playing that a little later on. So, uh, so don't ask me yet. Um, so yeah, I hope that kind of helps. So it, it it's just a case of looking at your audio mixer and finding out when you play the video how is it how is it peaking. You see on my my. Um, uh, middle thing here. This is not actually touching anything like the orange or the yellow. If I put my microphone up even louder, uh, then you can hear that, and it's getting closer to the top now. And if I shout, it's going to go into the yellow. Uh, but if I really shouted, it would go into the um, it would go into the red, which you don't want, of course. Um, so yeah, always always good to check those kind of volume levels and everything before you play it live, of course. Um, cause, um, you know, people like, uh, you know, they'll kind of put up with bad audio, uh, sorry, bad video. If the audio is okay, that's, that's the thing. So, um, uh, good evening to you. That's awkward, awkward, awkward squad project. Hello to you. And thank you very much for joining the stream. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Um, we're talking about compression tonight. Let me go back to my main screen so you can see what's going on. There we go. Hello. <laughs> and I'll put that back over that side so I can see what I'm doing. And then of course we have the desktop which is here. So we're looking at compression and we've turned on and off compression. On this particular project, we agree that compression is good. Uh, Jaden Sue 28 is in the house as well. Hello to you. Thank you so much for joining the stream as well. And um, I'm here, Jaden Sue 28. Excellent. Good to see you. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Thank you very much indeed for joining the stream. Um, so yeah, so we, we've agreed that compression sounds better on this particular um, scenario, you know, with a mix. Uh, some some warrant it, some don't. Uh, Jaden Sue twenty eight says hello, artfully yours, Diana. Uh, hello to you. Uh, in fact, let me just throw that up on the screen a second. There we go. Give you some love. There we are. All right. <clears throat> So, yeah, you know, uh, Diana, going back to your question, and I, I'll, I'll put that on the screen as well, just two seconds whilst we're talking about it. Um, it's um, It depends on the quality of the video that you're playing in the first place, the music on the video anyway that you're talking about, um, and what kind of level that was recorded at in the first place. But then also check your levels in the software. And, I, and you mentioned that you're using StreamYard, which is a great piece of software, by the way, uh, and is a free, I believe it's on a free trial, and you can... You can um, Pay a little bit more, of course, and then get rid of the watermarks that are on it. But you know what? 
it, it doesn't look too bad with the watermarks on it. I saw somebody go live earlier on with uh, StreamYard and they had a, a logo at the top, a logo at the bottom, said, you know, live with StreamYard and all that kind of stuff. And it looked fine. And, and the good thing about that is you can bring people into StreamYard. And I've seen you do, do it, Diana. It's very good, isn't it? Uh, where you can bring people in on the call or on your live stream, rather. And the quality's good. The picture's good depending on your internet connection, of course, but, you know, it, it's, it's really good. So, you know, if you're not going to splash out on vMix, vMix has got a 60-day trial anyway, uh, currently. So if you go to vmix.com, uh, you can see the, the, the full version. It's a full pro version for 60 days. Uh, no watermarks or anything. You can use the whole thing for 60 days before you... Um, you know, before you get into it and that kind of thing. So I would go there and, and uh, try that. If you're on a PC, that is. It's PC only. So um, vMix is PC only. But on the Mac, you can use Ecamm, Ecamm Live. Um, some people use Streamlabs OBS uh, or OBS on its own. Uh, I tried that and I couldn't get on with it for some reason. I don't know why. I'm not going to slate it, but I'm, I just couldn't get on with it audibly. Uh, couldn't route everything in properly as I wanted it to. Um, so I'm glad I've stuck with vMix and I've you know, pay for the HD version as well. So that's that's fantastic. Welcome to new subscriber Jaden Sue Twenty Eight has just subscribed. Thank you so much indeed. It really does help the channel. Thank you so much. Do spread the word, won't you? Uh, and I do have a button for that as well. There's a button for that. Uh, just there. Look. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. So we've looked at compression from um, the point of view of a, a production uh, on the desktop, as I showed you just now. So this one. Uh, so now what we're going to do, what we're going to do before I launch into this little surprise that I've got for you, <laughs> um, and I'm going to solo that as well and bring that in in a second. I'm going to just save that, and then we'll come back to that in a second. What I'm going to do is because I've just noticed, and I've been talking to you all the way through without any compression on my microphone here in the studio. Now it doesn't sound bad, and it's you know it's nice and clear and you can hear what i'm saying and the diction's fine hopefully and and all that kind of stuff it doesn't have any eq on it and eq is equalization so all that is is bass middle and treble if you want to look at it simply like that okay bass middle and treble is your eq um diana says i have paid version because you get many more stream yard hours of streaming i didn't know they limited your hours that's interesting so thank you very much indeed for that little bit of information diana and, um, and thank you so much for the um, the stream review, the YouTube stream review the other day on your channel. That was really interesting, and um, I enjoyed that. And thank you for having me on. It was uh, it was really worthwhile. Uh, Jaden says, "How do I get monetized fast?" That's a very good question. I'm not the expert. Matthew Haas is the expert. I don't think he's in the room tonight, but um, check out his channel called All Things YouTube, and he'll be able to tell you um, when you reach a certain subscriber level, um, which is the th thousand i believe a thousand subscribers but over four thousand hours of watched time uh then you are able to <coughs> excuse me you're able to monetize your channel okay so that's when you can have um uh, a layer and you can't even see me can you when i'm waving to the camera you can't even see me uh, so you, you can have a layer uh, of maybe merch for instance and all that kind of stuff so you know you, but you have to have a thousand subscribers and you have to have 4,000 hours of watch time on your channel before that is allowed. OK, we've recently surpassed 100 subscribers, which means we qualify for the um, uh, custom URL. So it now says YouTube.com forward slash C forward slash Love Audio Production, which is ace. And um, it just makes it easier when you're typing and you have to send that off to people, then, you know, it's a lot easier for them to find instead of those letters and numbers that you normally get. If you see a fly, by the way, can you just swat it for me? Because it's just it's buzzing around the room. Let's get back to the job in hand. We're talking about compression. OK, and uh, what I was going to do is bring my phone up as a separate camera, but I've got very low GPU at the moment. I've got a GPU overload signal coming in because I think I'm using too many uh, things at once. So I've got the screen open with my audio. Um, I am getting an upgrade to the video card fairly soon, so that will hopefully give me more bandwidth as regards videos, which is cool. Um, Diana says, yes, for free version StreamYard, you only get two hours of streaming or maybe four hours. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Um, so anybody looking at, uh, at StreamYard, check that out as well. And Diana's got a, a great channel where she goes into more detail and, and gives you shouts outs and things like that if you support the channel, all that kind of thing. So get on over to uh, Artfully Blind with Diana. 
and uh, she'll tell you more about it, okay? She may even bring you on as a guest. <laughs> Hopefully, fingers crossed, anyway, wind in the right direction. Okay, so let's go back to the main camera. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the EQ first of all, because I don't have any EQ on this microphone. EQ is very simply equalization, okay? So bass, middle, and treble, for want of a better word. And this is a vintage EQ that I'm going to type in on the mixing desk itself. Now, listen, if I am very clever, and I'm not normally, so let me just try this. This might not work, but we'll try it anyway, okay? Um, there's a piece of software that links itself to the mixing desk, and you might better see me change some of the settings. Let me go to Universal Control. Um, let me go to Desktop again. If I go to that, you should be able to see that. So this is called Universal Control. Where am I? Central, there you go. And you click on the mixing desk itself. Hey, bingo. When I first tried this, it would not work. And I was so embarrassed because I was trying to show people the software that came with it and it just did not work. Okay, so we've got the gate uh, on this particular channel. Now, if I, if I turn the gate, let's have a look here. If I turn the threshold up on the gate, which is, hang on a second. Oh, no, that's the that's the EQ. Let me go across to the EQ. That'll be better. So you'll notice the EQ isn't on. This little switch here switches the EQ on. Okay, now it's not currently on, but listen to the difference when I turn it on. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. So that's now on. Okay, and turn it off, and turn it on again. So what you'll notice is that it's a lot crisper at the top end. This is the high frequency notes that you hear. So the ch -ch 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 -ch, that kind of thing, okay? And this is the kind of mid-range stuff. So if we tweak that a little bit, you can notice a difference in the audio slightly. And this is going to be the low to mid frequencies. And I don't really touch that, to be perfectly honest with you. Don't uh, look at that too much. Um, let's go with this one. Interesting. <laughs> and then this one. And as I'm doing that, it's changing on the board as well, which is interesting. Uh, there we go. So that's now on. Can you hear the difference now? So that's a lot crisper. And if we turn that on, turn that down, and turn that to this one here, and if I tweak that even higher, you can hear the the really top crispy notes coming in. So and that's far too crispy for me. So I'm going to bring that down slightly. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And the low to mid highs, high to mid frequencies. So that we can move that around, and you can hear the difference there. So that's now gone kind of a really kind of muffled sound. Can you hear that? Uh, so that's not very good at all. So we bring that back up to where we need it. So one, two, three, four, five, just past the the midway sign. Uh, and that sounds a lot better now, which is cool. And then you've got the low to mid frequencies, which are these. If I turn that up, you can notice it sounds it sounds a bit it's very harsh. It's very kind of mid range. And it's kind of, you know, a bit, a bit, if you had some crackling going on in the background, it would sound like a, a you know, a 1920s vintage vinyl record going around you know what I mean so we turn that down because that's really really harsh so I'm going to bring that down to about midway because I don't want too much mid-range on there and then finally if you want more bass you're looking at the low frequencies okay and if I tweak that ever so slightly you'll notice that the bass is coming in really really loud and I don't want to over peak so you see when you put more bass on it it tends to pop a little more <laughs> even if you have a windshield on it like this um so yeah just backing that off slightly don't want it too bassy at the front some people like to roll the bass off completely uh, which is called a low frequency cut and I, i'd like a little bit more bass particularly if i'm doing a presentation like like this in a live stream um i like to keep that on if i can which is cool um diana says i live stream about 32 hours per month that's really good um, I don't think I'm anywhere near that yet. I do about an hour a week. <laughs> so so I'm nowhere near that, am I? Sometimes I do a midweek stream if I'm if I'm feeling in the mood. Um, but certainly, yeah, that's that's an amazing feat. So well done to you. That's superb. Wow. 32 hours a month. That's incredible stuff, isn't it? Um, so anyway, that's the EQ. But what we haven't explored yet is the compressor. Now, the compressor is now on the screen. And the button for it is not on yet okay now if i turn this on let's go back to my main screen on the desk as well so we get a comparison so if i turn the compressor on like that okay we're going to go back to the things that we we're talking about earlier on in fact let me bring up uh, no that's fine as it is let me bring up the 
threshold. We're talking about that earlier, weren't we? So this is the threshold, as you see there, the, the button that's highlighted there. Can you see that? And it's currently at 0 0.11 dB. Okay, so it's not really doing much at all. But the minute we change the threshold and bring that down, that's when the compressor starts to work harder. And I'll do the same on the desk here so you can hear the difference. Um, and let's turn that on. So we're bringing the threshold down and you can hear the volume decreasing. Okay, don't worry about that for two seconds. I'm just going to bring that down so that the, the knee of the threshold is roughly in the middle of that graph there. Can you see that on the screen? Okay, um, then I'm going to go to the attack. So that's how quick we want that to come in. Currently it's at 20 milliseconds, so two seconds really, uh, or sorry, 0.2 of a second coming in. So what we'd like to do is maybe bring that in a bit quicker. So 12.9 milliseconds perhaps, okay? So I'll do that on the desk as well and bring that into roughly the same. There we go. And then the next one we're going to look at is ratio. Not Horatio, fans of CSI Miami. <laughs> um, so we're looking at uh, ratio. So that's the difference between what you'd like to compress against what you're already playing. Okay, 2.2 to 1. Four, four to one is a good uh, a good ratio. So we're going to bring that up to four, four point zero to one, and I'll do the same on the desk. So bringing the ratio up to four point one, four point zero to one rather. There we go. Um, but you can hear because when I when I breathe, what it's doing is compressing the sound that I'm doing through the microphone, but it's lifting my breath because my breath is quieter than my voice can you hear that so when i breathe it's like it's like that whooshing sound that you sometimes get on radio when you're listening to the radio it's highly compressed and you can hear the jock go and it sounds like he's wheezy really wheezy so what we need to do is to bring up some makeup gain okay we talked about this just now didn't we so we're going to bring up the gain on this particular compressor okay so the gain here is currently at zero so we need to bring that gain up quite substantially in order to bring it back to, to normal okay so on the desk itself I'm bringing that up now one two three four five so you can hear that gain coming through now and that's bringing the volume up to where it's where it should be I think but you can <laughs> the breaths that I'm taking seem to be the same level as the voice that I'm that I'm speaking okay so that's 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 what a compressor is doing it's lifting the quiet bits and squishing the loud bits so that they end up pretty much uniform all the way across the wave file and and for me that's not a very good sound i don't particularly like that kind of <laughs> that kind of whooshing sound because it's, it's playing havoc with my ears and goodness knows what it's doing to your your speakers and everything else but um it's um it's one of those things that you, you know you have to play around with it's not going to suit everybody um so you know the idea is to just if you've got a compressor on your system just have a play around with it do what it you know do it to to suit your voice and 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 nobody else's and then maybe save it as a preset somewhere uh, and that will certainly help you okay so um the final thing i want to quickly look at is a limiter and um just on the right hand side there if i can move that across hang on a second let's see if i can shine let's move now just move the bottom one that's no good is it um let's have a look here can i move that no okay uh, so a limiter what a limiter's doing is limiting what's coming out to the final channel so that's on zero db at the moment so it's not doing any work okay that's why that 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 knob is fully to the right okay just there look you see that's on zero db now if i was to limit the signal going to the main output then i could raise that as high as i wanted to um, so you could have the compressor really high but then have the limiter quite high as well so it's actually squashing everything down and making sure that you don't peak and and that's that's quite useful as well in the final mix so on the desk i do i have a limiter yeah i've got a limiter on here but it's not currently in it's not currently active so if i try that for you now what you'll do is you'll you'll hear the compressor and uh, sorry the limiter working just about now so what it's doing is it's bringing down the whole volume that comes out to the mainstream um so it's not peaking at your end okay so i could be really loud here and it won't peak at your end. 
So you can, you, you can you can step back off the microphone and really shout, yay! And it's not going to peak because I've got that limiter working hard, okay? Now, I don't tend to have a limiter on this particular channel, so I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to return my settings to pretty much normal because these are really harsh and uh, it's not particularly brilliant. There we go. So bringing that, um, you can hear that threshold changing now. So I'm bringing my voice back up to what it kind of normally is really. And then bringing the makeup gain down because I don't need quite so much volume coming down to your end as I did before on that compressor. Okay. Um, so again, going back to the compressor settings here, changing that threshold, moving it up. And then the, the makeup gain I'm bringing down to kind of compensate because I don't want it too loud in there. Okay. So hopefully that was helpful with regards to compression. I'm going to turn this particular software off now, which is fine. Don't need that. And what we're going to do is bring back the mix that we had earlier on. Okay. Uh, Diana says, yeah, I'm a huge fan of CSI Miami. Yeah, me too. I haven't seen it for ages, though. Uh, is Horatio still in it or has he been written out? <laughs> Not entirely sure, but anyway. Um, so the, the, uh, we've, uh, you could go on and on about compression and, um, you know, it's, it's either for and against. Sometimes it's a good thing. Like we mentioned earlier on, if I turn this off now, uh, which is the compressor that I'm using on the desk, if I turn that off, that's completely back to normal now. So it's not too bad. So actually I've got the EQ, the equalization uh, settings, not too bad at all. So it's giving you that volume. It's giving you that crispness at the top. And it's also giving you the base at the bottom as well, okay? Um, so that's pretty much it with regards to compression. If you have any questions about it, please do drop them into the comments and I'll try and answer them as soon as I can. Um, so lots of comments from Diana and uh, Jaden as well. Hope you're enjoying the stream, Jaden. Thank you so much for joining us for the first time and thank you for subscribing. Well done to Diana as well. Uh, as I say, thanks to... Uh, uh, let's have a look here. Thanks to Dan, Dan Woodward over there in Swindon, and also to Sammy Cool in New Jersey. Now, Sammy, I hope you stuck around uh, for this particular bit because I think it's about time we did this. It's the jingle of the week. <sighs> yes. Time for Jingle of the Week. New feature, new segment here on the live streams on a Monday night. Because I know that you've been pestering to play jingles. Uh, so what I wanted to do was to feature a jingle every week uh, from a different part of the USA, uh, mainly. Um, we could feature some UK ones as well, but certainly we'll feature some from the Americans because uh, it just they're a lot better, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> apart from the ones I use, of course. Uh, so what I'm going to do is play your jingle... Um, that is, or was, in fact, on air at a station called WABC in New York. And um, it's covered quite a wide area, and quite a wide area incorporated New Jersey. And I think I'm right in saying that, uh, Sammy, if you're on the stream right now, uh, you are from that part of the world. So you won't remember this jingle because it was produced way, way before you were even thought of. Um, but I wanted to play you this. This is by Jam Creative Productions in Dallas of Texas. And it's WABC. And the package is called You'll Like Our Style. Have a listen to this. Cut 20. Available exclusively from Jam Creative Productions Incorporated, Dallas, Texas. 
Absolutely. Uh, Diana says, what year was that? Uh, do you know what? I think it was 1979, as far as I know, Diana. Um, I will try and check with John Wolfert, who's the uh, the president of Jam Creative Productions. And uh, he's due to get back to me, actually, because I emailed him earlier to make sure he was OK with us playing his jingles and stuff. I'm sure he's pretty fine with it. And um, yeah, if you want jingles for your own show, by the way, uh, look at jingles.com. Uh, that's their website. So www.jingles.com. All right. Whew, out of breath now. So other ways that you can support the channel as well as subscribing, you can also check out my uh, Teespring sites. That is at uh, teespring.com. Look for Love Audio's merch shop. Love Audio's merch site. I keep forgetting which what, what I've called it, to be honest. Hang on, let me check. Hang on. I'll give you two seconds. Hang on. Um, here we go. So if I go there, Love Audio's merch. Where are we? I keep forgetting what I called it, you know. Uh, Love, Love Audio's merch store. It's teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash love hyphen audios hyphen merch hyphen store. And you can see the T-shirts and also the mugs. Which look like you can't see that, can you? Look like that, okay? Look at that, brand new. I got it on purple because I like the, I like the color purple. It kind of goes with a blue background. Um, so uh, yeah, so um, that's a, that's one way you can do it. Uh, you can also support me on Patreon if you wish. Patreon.com forward slash Love Audio Production, um, which I don't have the pip for. Oh, here we are. Uh, so if I do that, that should come up on there, which is cool. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for today. I really hope you've enjoyed uh, the show, all about compression. Uh, if you watch the playback, of course, then uh, that'll be able to kind of stop things and pause them and move forward and back and all that kind of stuff as well, which is cool. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you next time on the stream. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll try and answer them through the week if I can. Uh, until next time, of course, we'll, um, we'll catch you later. Take care. Everyone. <laughs>